Tim, whatever happened to common sense when you see uh, those protesters being offered uh, whatever they need, really, as they persist in blocking the busiest motorway in Britain? Uh, you're left scratching your head. It looks terrible, but let me say a word in defence of the police. It's a difficult situation because there's a health and safety element to it, because it's a road. And so the police have a responsibility to handle and, and clear the protesters, but they also have responsibility to guarantee that no one's hurt. Uh, and second, there have been changes in police tactics, some of which actually were necessary. Uh, that you don't, it, it not, isn't necessarily the best way to clear people uh, is to approach them in an aggressive way. Sometimes being polite can be the right way to go about it. I get all of that. But the problem is, is that if you stand back from the situation, you have a group of people essentially taking the public hostage by their action. And you have the police acting in a way which is so, uh, so kind and so thoughtful and so helpful that it starts to look like facilitation of the protest. Now, again, slightly in defense of the police, a part of the problem is the nature of the law and a lack of clarity over what, what comes first, the right to protest or the right of people to use that road. And what the government's trying to do with this legislation is rebalance that so there's a greater priority upon the right of people to use that road. I think this is, this is a PR disaster for the police. I think they've got to go away and rethink their tactics. Because while, as I said, I understand why they're trying to handle protests in a, protests in a certain way, they've got to understand that this, plus the diversity and equality woke group they're into, plus the various arrests they've carried out or investigations they've carried out to hate crimes, which look really dubious, they are starting to irritate and lose the patience of the public. And that's a very dangerous situation to be in when citizens don't feel that uh, the people who are employed to enforce the law are doing their job. Corrodes that basic principle of policing by consent, doesn't it? I think just since you introduced the idea, Tim, of looking at this through the other end of the telescope, let me put it this way as well. I mean, it's hard to think... I mean, if this had happened in, in France... Maybe that's a bad example, because there are lots of protests in France <laughs> involving people queuing up tractors and all the rest of it. But in many other countries, if this had happened, and people who were trying to get to urgent medical appointments, to get to work on time for an interview, whatever it was, or indeed being involved in a crash, and there were a few incidents filmed by people of people who clearly lost their rag, who were determined to have it out with the protesters directly at themselves, and then the police actually got involved to protect the protesters in a slightly Kafkaesque twist. But, you know, we do queue when we have to as a, as a, as a nation, and actually the way of looking at this story which says that there was a lot of forbearance and fortitude and stoicism shown by the people who just stayed in their cars, shrugged their shoulders phlegmatically and thought, well, there we go. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. If this had happened in many other countries, uh, well, those protesters would not have stayed there very long. If this had happened in America, I suspect some people would have carried on driving. So thank goodness uh, we live in, in peaceful England where we resolve things peacefully. Uh, but I think if you step even further back, I think part of the context of this is that some in the police agree with what the protesters are doing. I'm not accusing the police of being on their side or anything, but let's not be naive. There's been a cultural change in the police institution. And I think right now there are a lot of people uh, in positions of power who think that uh, a moral position almost trumps the law. That because they sympathise with the cause that those people represent, they think they have to behave in a slightly different way towards them than they would to, say, a far-right protest. Can you imagine if a group of racist thugs did what they did? Would the police have handled it with the same degree of compassion, care and concern. Well, you could say they wouldn't because it would be a different uh, level of morality involved that mm. those people wouldn't deserve that degree of compassion and concern shown. But, but my point is that I feel the police, rather than simply straightforwardly enforcing the law, which is what they're paid to do, it feels too much like they're actually being injected into the culture war debate. I don't want them to be on the left or the right. I just want the law to be clear and sensible and then to enforce it. Well, let me just try and uh, stay with us, actually, Tim, because we're going to try and illustrate almost exactly the point you're making on one level, and we're not really here just to pillow the police, honest. Uh, we, we've got another story tonight. This one's concerning Norfolk Constabulary, and there the police stand accused of being, well, as the phrase goes, social justice warriors uh, first and upholders of the peace second. I'm going to show you some footage in a second. It concerns an anti-abortion protest in Norwich city centre. A pro-life protester was allegedly punched in the face. A fellow protester asked the police to take action and was seemingly told that showing offensive images or being offensive was equivalent to being literally punched in the face. This is part of the exchange.
word for it. Uh, it is. Uh, sorry, Tim. This, this, it wasn't your sound. It was our sound. <laughs> oh, good. But, yeah, but actually, my, I've got no, no. no there, there was sound. There was. There were meant to be. Well, you could see the words, but actually, you were meant to hear them as well. Um, but it, it is as described in my introduction. There, um, the, the, the police are are saying there's a moral equivalence between somebody being punched literally in the face and somebody right. somebody being offended by the sight of a, of an image of. I mean, admittedly graphic image of uh, related to abortion. Uh, and the police officer in question there in that conversation says that would cause trauma equivalent to being punched in the face. What, what say you? I don't know who died and made them pope. Uh, that, that is, they, they are not in a position to have that conversation. And that's the key thing here, because I want to be clear that I'm not saying the police should be on my side of any culture war. They shouldn't be on any side of any culture war. And the problem is, is that they seem to be stepping into ethical disputes where they don't belong. There was another occasion where a preacher... Uh, was accused of um, uh, preaching homophobically in the town centre. And apparently, it is alleged, uh, the police, in taking him away, uh, said to him, how would you feel if one of your children was gay? Uh, it's a good question. It's a perfectly reasonable question. Again, for a member of the public to ask. It's totally inappropriate for the police because they are not there to influence the law. They're not there to interpret the law. And they're also not there to try to shape the conditions under which law is written by shaping attitudes in society. Is this the police's fault though? Well, not entirely. They are responding both to a cultural change within the police force since the 90s, some of which was necessary to make the police uh, a far more diverse and representative organization, but they're also responding to legislation and law. They're responding to things like hate crimes legislation. Mm. You can see why they might think it's become their job to do that because the message in the wider culture and politics is that words are violence. And therefore, it's not a surprise. Don't be surprised when the police start thinking it's their job to police words as well as actions. I, I just wish, Tim, they'd keep the emotion out of it. I, I mean, some people will say, yeah. I want to go back to the 1950s and Dixon and the Doc Green and all the rest of it. But for me, I remember the moment there was a trial in, in Leeds at the end of which the police officer described it was the case of Sharon and uh, Karen Matthews. It was a nasty case, but it wasn't evil which was the word that the police officer, the investigating police officer, used to describe her character. And I thought, watching that at the time, something is changing. Police officers, maybe they've watched too many cop shows, but they feel they need to inject emotion into a situation where they ought to be removing emotion. That is a conversation, however, for another occasion. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.